Hello everyone, this is Mike and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to look at how to query local group membership from a remote computer. So in part one of what's going to ultimately be a two-part series here, um, I'm going to grab the guts of the group membership from a remote computer. So I'm going to write a script that's going to utilize PowerShell remoting and it's going to go get the local group information. So what I want to do with it, since I'm going to work with this further um, in, a later, in a later video, is I'm going to set it up just to output objects to the pipeline. So basically what we're going to do is for each uh, group member, uh, we're going to make an object. So if I have a group that has, let's say, five members in it, I'm going to have five objects coming out from the pipeline. So those objects will have properties on them. You'll have the, uh, the member, obviously, uh, the group that it's a member of, and the computer where it came from. Uh, so then in part two, which I'll release um, in a little bit, uh, we're going to look at fancying this up. So being able to take the output, save it as a template, be able to use the template to scan another computer, so like basically you can capture the group membership of like a known good computer and then compare that to a computer that you want to verify is maybe set up correctly uh, to be able to see the changes. So, so the membership in the template versus the membership of a computer you're trying to see is maybe accurate for what maybe your security policies are or something like that. Okay, so with that, let's, uh, let's switch over to AVM here. So I am... Uh, using my DC1 VM, and I do have a client1 VM up as well uh, that I'll be using to do the remote query work against. Now, when you're working with uh, local groups, uh, the commandlets you're going to use are going to be get local group, uh, would be one of them, and get uh, local group member uh, would be the other one here. Right? So, Let's just put something in there so we can see, you know, uh, a list of the groups and then a list of who is a member of those groups. Now, if you look at the help on basically either of them, uh, you'll find that they have no remoting ability built into them at all. So they have to be wrapped up inside of a PowerShell remoting session because uh, the individual commandlets don't have a way of contacting a remote computer. So we're going to be using PowerShell remoting to basically make this happen. Right? Um, so with this, uh, this will produce, uh, if we just want to, you saw the output of this, if you will. So if we kind of run to this, we can see we get names, uh, names and descriptions of groups. Uh, so in fact, let me just kind of wrap this up inside of a remoting session and then script block let's do uh, get local group let's do something like this and we could see from client one which is a windows 10 vm uh, we have the typical groups that come with a windows 10 uh, operating system so i have not really modified this other than it's just joined to my uh, lab environment uh, ad domain here uh, so we could see the other groups that are here. Now, the other one that we're going to want to do uh, was the get local group member. So in order to run that, you need to supply the name of a group that you want to see the members of. Okay? So for instance, uh, get, local group, uh, get local group member, and the name, maybe I want to look at uh, uh, power users, you know? and we can see that the results that come back, right? So the reason why I want to run these just in a console on their own is I want to see what the output looks like that I'm getting with to work with. So for instance, like with um, uh, get local group, you get a whole object, but really all I need are just the names of the groups, right? So I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to extract uh, these values out of there. So these are going to be in string format. Um, and then I'm going to use that as kind of the source here, right? So, so you know, we're running this commandlet and the names of the groups. I want to run basically this line, if you will, for each local group. 
Um, and then we see in the output here, really all I want back from here is again, just the names of the local group members. So the rest of this stuff I could, you know, at least at the moment really care less about. Uh, you know, maybe I might care about principal source to know if the group was coming from Active Directory or otherwise. Um, the computer name I'll have, um, and again, we're going to do something with this, like I might want to strip off, you know, like the first part of this and just have the actual name, uh, if you will. Okay, right? so, so there's a few things that we'll uh, play around with here. Okay, right? so let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, crack open an ISE session, and we're going to go make a script here. So I'll start off with my typical... Um, script construction here. So we'll do commandlet binding because uh, we're probably going to utilize some function, some advanced function parameter in here at a later point in time. Uh, parameter block and uh, we're going to need a computer name because we're querying remote computers, right? So let's uh, maybe store this in string format and I want it to accept multiple strings. I'm going to do multiple computers. So we'll put those brackets there, close it off, and then um, the name of my parameter, computer name. And I'm writing it in like fancy text, uh, capitalizing the, the, the letters that I want here because that's how it would be displayed if somebody was to tab complete the parameter, right? When they're, when they're typing it out in the console. And with that much made, let me just go ahead and save this. I'll save it to my uh, demo folder here and we'll just call this maybe uh, groups one, all right? Uh, so now we need to go out and uh, do some work to computers here, all right? So the first thing that, uh, that we're gonna do uh, is we need to establish um, a contact that we're gonna do to a remote computer and I'm going to put it in, in a for each construct because I might have more than one computer to deal with. All right. So, so with this, we're going to start off with a, uh, a for each. Oops, and that did not type what happened there. Yeah, my focus back over here. Okay. So for each. Um, and for each is going to be a looping construct. Uh, we're going to do, it's going to run once for each, for however many objects are in dollar computer name. And for each time, it's going to grab one object, which I'll put in a variable called dollar PC. So dollar PC in dollar computer name. Uh, and then we've got our script block. So the first thing we're going to do um, is we're going to go contact that remote computer and hold on to it. So we're actually going to make a session out of it. Uh, store it in a variable called dollar $session. Helps if I spell it right. Actually, if I spell it wrong, it doesn't matter as long as I keep, kept spelling it wrong all the way through. Uh, but dollar $session, let's do a new PS session, uh, computer name, uh, dollar $PC. Okay, so we're going to make a session to the remote computer to then be able to run commands through it. All right, so the first command we're going to do would be the uh, invoke command. Uh, the session would be $PC. And uh, we're going to do the script block uh, where we're going to uh, get, get local group. And... What I'm going to do is um, I, I don't want the, uh, uh, the whole thing here. So we are going to, oh, and I just realized I did a parenthesis rather than a curly bracket. There we go. Uh, so get local group, and then we're going to do uh, for each object, and we're going to use member name, and we're just going to go grab the, uh, the name parameter. Okay. Now, um, I'm kind of writing everything out in full syntax. Uh, that that for each object line that could literally be summarized down to just percent, uh, which is the alias for uh, for each object uh, percent, and then the mem the member name parameter is actually positional, meaning you don't have to type it. This this value here will be presented to this parameter automatically, so I could just do something like that. 
So you could type everything out fully, which is what I do in my kind of build a script series here, or you can use aliases, which is what a lot of other folks do online to kind of cut down on the typing. Okay, but either way, so, so that's what we want to do there. Um, and then when we're done, we're, we're not going to be done with this right now, but just as, as kind of a testing here, just to make sure the first part works, we'll take the session and we'll remove it, all right? So that can be the start of the script here, all right? So let's go ahead and see if that works. Um, so let's do group, group one, PS1, computer name, uh, the VM I'm querying is client one. So I go ahead and I run it and something, I got something wrong there. So cannot bind parameter session. So let's see what's going on there. So new PS session. Oh, I did, uh, I did the computer name. There you go. Gotta love when you're doing these things live. Uh, okay, so yeah, so that was kind of funny. Uh, so I made the session, and now I want to call that session. So I saved that, and now this should uh, should work. There we go. So we have the names of all of the groups. So now I want to store this um, in a variable, right? Because uh, if I just let this output to the screen when you're running the script, the information's lost. So let's kind of save this in uh, dollar $Groups. And we'll do invoke command. And um, just for uh, clarity purposes, after the pipe, I'm just going to carriage return just to keep the next part on the next line here. So this is, uh, actually, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's take a session, and then we'll do a back tick and carriage return on the script block. And we'll just kind of line that up like right, like right there, all right? So that way you can see for invoke command, uh, we're doing these two parameters on it, all right? Now in your environment, uh, if the user that you're logged into the PowerShell session with, uh, so for instance, if I do who am I, I'm logged in as my admin account. If you need to run the script with a different set of credentials, you could uh, put a credential parameter up in your parameter block here. Uh, so I could do something like, um, uh, let's say dollar creds equals uh, get credentials, something like that. Um, and you could potentially gather, uh, gather a set of credentials. And then in invoke command, uh, what you could do is um, call it, you know, using uh, the credential parameter here. Right. So if I want to use, um, uh, for the script block, use, let's do a back tick, credential, you know, dollar cred, something like that. All right. And I don't know why this is, uh, why that's giving me a little bit of hassle there. Uh, dollar creds equals get credential. Hmm. I am no, that, that is I'm re nah, remembering that correctly. Uh, but that doesn't always mean that uh, my memory is uh, not infallible. It most certainly is. Um, yeah, maybe I want to do. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, just wrap it inside a set of parentheses. And then when you run the script, um, it'll prompt for the set of credentials you want to use. So so again, if you need another set of credentials, that would be an option that you could put in there, All right? So in my case, I don't need that uh, as of yet. So I'm gonna leave that blank and we're gonna get rid of the credential line right here and get rid of that back tick. All right. Um, Okay, so that gets the uh, the groups uh, that we're after here. And then the next thing is we want to query for each for each group, I want to grab the members of that group. So what that's actually going to do is that's going to give me um, a need to do another loop. 
So basically, like, um, uh, I want to do a loop here. So we're going to do a for each. And in this case, a dollar group in dollar groups, okay? Something like that. And then we're going to have, again, a script block kind of located in there. All right. uh, now, if you want to keep track, you could, uh, on the, the, the end curly brackets in your for each construct, uh, you could just maybe throw a, a comment there. Um, close computer for each, you know, something like that. Uh, and then uh, hashtag close group for each, okay? Something like that, All right? So, so again, it's gonna, you know, we'll probably need uh, another uh, for each here. So just kind of bear with me uh, because we want to contact each computer supplied in the script. We want for each group, we're gonna need to do something, which we'll, which we'll do right now. And then if the group produces more than one member, we're going to need to do something with that, right? So for this, we're going to do, again, we're going to do an invoke command. Uh, same session. That's why I made the session to begin with, because I have to go contact a computer multiple times. So it makes sense to create a session and then work through that session and then close it when you're done. Uh, so we're going to do that session. And the script block this time, uh, we're going to run get local group member. And the group uh, would be dollar group. All right. So now, because though this is in a script block, which is running on another computer, uh, dollar group is established on the computer where you're running the script from. So the remote computer is not going to know what to do with that. Okay, um, so you're going to get an error on that if you just kind of leave it as is here. Let me let me kind of show you what's happening. So let's rerun the script and see how it kind of throws like all of this red here. Uh, basically because it's running this command, whatever, how many, gr how many groups there are. It's running this command like that, you know, dozen times or whatever, and that's producing each of these errors here. Okay, so what's happening is there's, there's no value in group um, according to the remote computer. This variable has not been defined in that remote session it lives in your local PowerShell session where you're running the script from. So that's kind of a, a danger you run into when you're running a script on one computer and that script inside the code of the script is reaching out to another computer. Uh, the remote computer doesn't know what the variables in the local PowerShell session on the local computer is. Okay, because that's one of the things that doesn't cross from one PowerShell session to another, even on the same computer, right? Um, so on a, on a local computer here, in this PowerShell session, if I like define a variable like $x equals 10, and then I have another PowerShell session and I ask it, hey, what's $x? It doesn't know. So there's no magical way to get the, the values from one PowerShell session, the variables from one PowerShell session into another PowerShell session, okay? So when you're using the remoting, uh, there is a trick you can use. So there's a, uh, an automatic variable that, that is created in a session called dollar $using. And basically what you do with it is you put in dollar using colon and then the name of the local variable um, and then th that value would be supplied in the remote session so when this code runs in the remote computer it'll actually have the value for dollar group right so uh so that's how you do it. dollar using colon and then the name of the local variable you want to send to the remote session and the name of the local variable is always without the dollar sign. Okay, the dollar sign technically is not part of the name of the variable. The dollar sign represents the contents of the variable. 
and then the rest of the letters or the rest of the characters are the actual name, right? So now that should work here, right? Uh, so dollar using group. So the, the output's probably gonna look a little, a little, uh, a little crazy, but as long as we get output, cool. So, so we have our output here. Um, so we can see again, who are the members um, of the groups. We don't actually see what groups they're a member of right now, by the way, uh, but we can see who's who's there. Okay, so I have a couple users here. I have user one, I've got uh, my Jeff Kent user, uh, user two, uh, as ones that I've added in here, okay? So now we want to, for each member, we want to put um, an object together. Okay, so we're going to save uh, the output of this invoke command into dollar users, right? Um, and again, I'm probably just going to do the same back tick trick here. There we go. Um, and so now, from running this, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do another. Uh, for each, and this would be dollar user and dollar users plural. Okay, and then I'll maybe throw a hashtag over here. Close users for each. So that way I can tell where each one's going. I also do my tab depths, right? So if you look at this, you can see like the for each the for the one for the computers starts there, and if you go straight vertically down, you can see the closing elements right there. So it's in the same vertical depth, if you will. And then the next for each, I have tabbed in. So like all the code inside this for each is at this tab depth right here, okay? And then notice for this for each, it closes right here. It's the exact same vertical path. Right, and then everything inside, oops, everything inside this for each is again tabbed in like one tab position. So there's the user line, there's the for each, and then now everything inside this for each is also going to be tabbed in uh, to kind of make it easier to read. Okay, so I very, very picky about how I do like the tabs and stuff like that. All right. So now we're not going to do much in here other than we're just going to output an object. Okay, so we're going to uh, create a property table. So dollar props equals, um, and then we'll put a uh, property table together in, in a hash table. So uh, we'll make a value called uh, computer name uh, equals, and the computer name in this part of the loop would be dollar PC. Uh, we're going to do another property. Uh, we want the group name, um, and that would be assigned to dollar, the variable dollar group. Uh, then we're going to do dollar username, or dollar user, I guess, whatever you want to do there. Oh, it's not. There we go. All right. uh, and then we're going to grab uh, dollar user. Okay, and I wanted one more. I wanted this principal source. Um, so that would be on um, the dollar user part here. All right, so uh, let's see. So what do I want here? Um, so that would be dollar user dot principal source is what I think I want. So username would be dollar user. Uh, dot name and then how about I'll just call it source uh, would be dollar user dot principal source all right so I think that'll be a good property table um, now we're going to uh, make an object out of that we'll do new object Type name ps object and properties uh, dollar props. All right, and that should um, output something for us. <laughs> See how it looks.
All right. Um, so let's see. So we got username, group name, um, and it's putting a lot of stuff in there. Okay, so let's see what, uh, oh, group and I did dollar groups. I just want dollar group, All right? And make sure I didn't mess that up anywhere else here. So dollar users, user, user. Okay, let's, uh, let's try that. Okay, so we got username, we got group name, computer name, and source. So if you notice, like for instance, the administrators group shows up twice because there's two members, the domain admins group from the domain and the administrator um, is there. Um, and we can see that uh, this is in fact a local group, whereas this is in fact a group that came from Active Directory. All right. Uh, so let's see, what else do we have here? Um, so we have uh, these uh, system groups. So notice those are showing a source unknown because they're not uh, technically groups that were made on the local computer in Active Directory. They're kind of like the system, uh, the auto system generated groups that come on a computer. So I users, uh, the users group, those are shown as unknown. So that's fine. Uh, but one thing you will notice though is notice the order that the properties are in are different than the order in the hash table. Okay, so by default, if you leave PowerShell to its own devices like this, um, it'll put them in any way that it feels like. So if I want them in the order that I typed them in, um, and in fact, I, I think I might uh, alter this one right here. Um, I'm gonna put it there instead. Right, like so, because now all the properties are alphabetical, right? So, and then I'll cast this as an ordered hash table, uh, like so, all right? So I could do something like that. And then the other thing I could do, uh, just to do a little bit of fanciness to this, is if I want to strip off like the first part of this. Uh, so maybe I just want the actual username. Um, instead of having this this whole thing where it's you know the, the the computer name or the domain name backslash and then the name of of the user, uh, what I could do is I could strip that off. Uh, so like in in dollar user dot name I can use a replace and then identify the beginning part of the string. So uh, let's do a caret. I'm doing a regex uh, syntax here to identify the parts of the string. So that little caret, uh, which is shift six on your keyboard, uh, that identifies the beginning of a string. I want a dot, which represents any character. Uh, then I want multiple of them um, up to a backslash. Because um, if you look here, there was a backslash. So beginning of the string, multiple characters up to the backslash. Okay. Now in regex though, backslash is a is a, a, a special regex character as well. So if you want to use it, you have to uh, basically escape it. So so that um, so that the regex kind of engine in PowerShell doesn't decipher the backslash as a special character. So the escape character is also a backslash as well. So that's why I need to put a double backslash there. Um, so if, for instance, I was looking for um, an actual period, um, a period in, in regex means any character. So it's a special regex value. Uh, if I wanted to actually use a, a like have, have regex look for a regular period, I would also have to escape it as well. Um, so how I would escape it, let me just type it here. Uh, if I was looking for an actual period, it would be period backslash like that. So that would be, uh, I'm sorry, backslash period, I'm sorry. Uh, so you're doing an escape, and then the character that comes after that would be whatever you're looking for literally. So if you're looking for a literal period. Uh, but in this case, that's not what I want. So I want to identify the beginning of the string, any character, multiple of them, 
with with a backslash and then i want to replace that ultimately i'm going to replace that with nothing but i want to show you that it will in fact find that so maybe i'll just put zzz -Z -Z there um, and then notice in the output uh, what it does to username. Okay, so notice on username, see how it replaced that. Okay, so I was able to identify. Um, now, ultimately, I don't want that, so I will replace it with nothing. Okay, that's the cool thing about replace is you don't actually have to replace. You can use it to just get rid of something. So we'll save that. And then run this uh, probably our final time here. Um, and we can see that the raw information is exactly what we want. Okay, So we've got the computer name, the group name, the source, and the user. Okay? So, um, so if you notice here, like some of these show up multiple times, right? Um, so we can see for users, there was you know three different um, accounts that were a member of the users group. Uh, administrator shows up twice because there was two different members for administrators and so on. All right. So that's going to be the uh, the basic uh, body of the script that we're going to be working with to uh, to start here. All right. So let me uh, let me get rid of some of the blank lines here just to kind of close it up a little bit. All right, and then we can see all of that on one big uh, one one screen of information here, and that's going to be our beginning script here to go uh, query the local group membership from a remote computer. All right, so with that, I'm going to end um, this video on on that note here, and stay tuned for our part two, uh, which will be coming out in a bit. Uh, where I'm going to take this script and I'm going to add in more parameters to uh, be able to save the output as a template, be able to compare a template against um, another computer. And so we'll see how to put all of that functionality in. So I'm going to use like parameter sets. I'm going to use um, um, a switch construct probably uh, to work with this. So there's going to be some cool stuff that we're going to be adding in. So so stay tuned for that. Okay, so with that, uh, this is going to be our beginning script. I'm not going to upload this uh, for download because ultimately this is, uh, we're halfway done, so we're not fully done with this yet. Um, so be, so basically, you know, you, we can see all the code right here. All right. Um, so thanks everybody for tuning in and watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please post in the comments. And if you do enjoy uh, watching me put scripts together, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, there is some other good content up on my channel as well. I've got some uh, Network Plus stuff. I've got uh, some Azure uh, KQL. If you guys want to know how to query stuff with uh, Kusto Query Language in Azure, I've got some stuff up for that, some HTML reporting. So it's cool stuff to be found. All right, so have a good one, and we will see you in the next video.